and we are live. So we are just about to start this incredible event. Uh, you will be able to uh, meet some very interesting people that will tell you interesting stories. Uh, we will wait just, it will be like a minute more before we start and let people come uh, into the room here. My name is Bente Liliabi. I am Norwegian and uh, a nature-loving gadget geek uh, for some of you who have uh, joined us from uh, my Periscope uh, and social, other social media, you know that's uh, what I normally say about myself. Uh, we have a very interesting program today and um, uh, you will have a unique possibility to chat live with these experts. And you will also have a very unique opportunity to become part of a uh, innovation, both a social and a technological innovation. And I see that we are on the hour. Uh, so let's, uh, let's go. So, hi there and welcome to uh, this uh, online training um, where you will learn how you can make your trips uh, to the mountains safer, particularly in the summertime. And you will learn about a new tool and you will meet real modern time adventurers and you will be invited to be a part of it all. So. Uh, a little bit of uh, housekeeping before we, we go on. Uh, the first thing is that you uh, will be able to chat live with uh, us here in this uh, online room. And uh, there's a chat box that you can um, uh, that you can post your questions and, and you can whenever you whenever you come up with the questions just post it and we will uh, we will follow up the answer of these questions will however happen towards the end so stay on to the end and um, I think there will be then a presentation first we will uh, meet Alexia Massacon who is the initiator behind uh, this new tool that you will learn about and also uh, who will then uh, introduce some of the basics in uh, preparation for the summer mountains. And then you will also meet mapping expert Ezio Busoletti, who is working on Earth observations and mapping on a global scale. And you will also meet uh, a modern time ex uh, adventurer, a mountain adventurer, uh, called Tulmud Granheim. All of these three you will meet shortly. So, and my name, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Bente Liliabi, and I am indeed a mountain lover. I am also uh, an earth science expert, and I particularly take an interest now in citizen science. And what you will learn is how we as citizens can contribute to science and the result in this case will be safer um, trekking in the mountains. So uh, I think we can start. Uh, first of all, I would love to uh, then I'd like to introduce to you Alexia Massacan. She has a PhD in uh, climate weather climate research. Uh, she has spent uh, a decade at least in, uh, Earth uh, relate, in work related to Earth observations and she is also a member of the Swiss Alpine Club where she is a tour leader. And uh, she has a, definitely a passion for the mountains. Uh, Alexia, can you say hi to us? You have to unmute yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's part of the dynamics. Hi, everyone. <laughs> it's a great, it's a great pleasure to be with you tonight. Hello, Alexia. And then uh, we have Ezio Bozzoletti. Uh, he is an Italian um, expert on maps. Like I said, he works for a UN with a UN body. I would say uh, that are concerned with. Uh, global maps. Uh, he is also a teacher in space physics and uh, has been working on Earth observations uh, for many years already. He has dedicated his life currently to the environment. Uh, hello, Ezio. Can you say hello, hello? to everybody? Hello, hello. hello. 
And finally, uh, but not least, uh, unmute yourself, Turmud. You are about to be uh, <laughs> presented to uh, the audience. Turmud Granheim is a Norwegian uh, modern time skier and uh, mountain adventurer. Among his merits is that he was the first to descend from Mount Everest on the north side on skis and he was really quick from uh, with his climbing. He spent like 24 hours to getting up there. That's quite an, an achievement in itself. And currently he is on a quest to conquer the 82 summits of the European Alps that are higher than 4,000 meters. So we are very uh, curious to hear your uh, experiences in the mountains. Tudmut, can you say hi to the audience? Yeah, hi everybody. It's uh, nice to be with you. Great. So, uh, brace yourself. You will now be exposed to some education. Some education that we as uh, mountain lovers are more than eager to learn about. Alexia, can you uh, start your presentation for us? Unmute yourself as well. Thank you so much, Bente. You're a star. Uh, I, 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 yeah, thank you for your patience with me. Okay, so I'll try to share my screen. Is this working? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so going straight uh, into the heart of the of the matter, um, there are there are uh, a few um, factors that that you really uh, want to uh, take into account uh, when you go out in the mountains. And obviously, right now we're. <laughs> Considering that you know we're reaching the the beginning of July, where we're focusing more on summer than than winter, but the uh, we're just going to propose about four four key areas or four key points that anyone uh, would would need to consider before uh, going going out and, and and doing a serious outing in in the mountains. I guess the first one would be uh, and by the way. There, there is no order of importance. I mean, they're, they're equally important, and, and it's really the, uh, the combination of the four that makes you um, strong in your, in your endeavor. Um, the first one that we can look at is the, the human dimension. Sometimes it's, it's overlooked, but it's really uh, the combination of the, uh, of, of the skill of the people uh, around you. If, if you. if you take a group or if you go with your family or whatever, you, you really want to uh, spend a few seconds wondering about the skills, the, the, over, the overall fitness of the people with you, and also the, the chemistry of the group. Uh, sometimes it can be quite important, uh, especially if, you're, if you have several people on, on the same rope uh, uh, walking around. Uh, if people get on with one another, it's obvious, it, it usually works uh, much, much better. The, the second point is really about the field, uh, the terrain. Before going, you really want to uh, look uh, at, at the map, at the itinerary itself, at the, at the topo, as we call it in French. Really um, anticipate any, any difficulty as to where you should, uh, you should go. The slope itself, is, is it very steep, not steep? Uh, uh, strategic points where you really need to know, I mean, not to make any mistakes. All that you should factor into your uh, your presentation, uh, your your preparation. The third point is really, which is also kind of obvious, but it's really the weather. Uh, you um, and the weather you want to know or to 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 anticipate as much as possible the weather uh, during your outing, and and so you will check the, all the weather reports, etc., and, and looking for maybe thunderstorms or or, or possible uh, mist, uh, depending on how high uh, you're going in, in the mountains, um, but also you want to check the weather before and really to, uh, to really understand the, the dynamics of the mountains as much as possible before you actually get out there. And the fourth point, which really takes us to the heart of the, of, of the, the next uh, 25 minutes or so, is, is about the recent conditions. You really want to know uh, as much as possible uh, whether the uh, the ground, I mean, either the earth or the rock, is going to be slippery. Is it going to be covered by a, by a thin layer of snow? Uh, is, it, is it going to be completely damped? Is the rock uh, going to be unstable? I mean, I mean, are you going to be in a position to be showered by 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 by, by rocks, for instance, uh, or not? 
uh, crevasses uh, are they expected non expected um, snow bridges as well uh, rivers that you may have to cross or how high are they all this connected to the risk level and if you nowadays at least for the Alpine region if you look for all these types of information, especially uh, two and three, um, you'll be able to find reasonable uh, uh, degree of information either online or through the, uh, you know, there are very good now uh, weather forecasts available, etc. The thing that's really missing is about the very recent uh, conditions. And that really takes me to the, uh, the very motivation of why uh, uh, Mountain Now, uh, so this new tool that, that we're going to, to tell you about, was, was born. We live uh, in, in times that are maybe not the best times for, for mountaineering. The, uh, as we know, the climate is changing pretty, pretty rapidly, and this means that the risk in the mountains is, is rising. Now, it doesn't mean, of course, that every single rockfall is, is connected or is a direct consequence of, of climate change. We should be very careful with attribution. But nevertheless, the one thing that we're fairly certain about is that overall risk is rising. So the bad news is that we will need even more information than before uh, in connection with, uh, with the, uh, the mountain conditions. And really, our, our objective to us all is really to combine fun and safety as much as, much as possible. And there is no way we will stop enjoying the, those mountains that we, we love so much. So the challenge was to say, OK, what kind of information could we have that would really make uh, a difference? And that's when we came to this combination of having, ideally, uh, an information that would be up-to-date, georeferenced, that we would be available all, all year long, so summer and winter, uh, equally, um, that would be valid for the whole Alpine region, so not a single country, but really that you could, you could, that would be borderless, basically, that would be completely free and uh, based on this uh, technology that Bente, you, you and I love so much, which is uh, crowdsourcing. And actually, at this point of time, I just would like to very briefly um, to, uh, to share um, uh, personally. Yes. Uh, I mean, I talked about the, the more scientific motivation for, for Mountain Now. I just would like to share my very personal um, experience and why uh, about a year ago uh, the idea came about of launching the, this whole project. I would say there were two defining moments. The first one was in June I, I started this, uh, this course to become a tour leader and, uh, and for me it was really an enlightening experience in the sense that I, I started really to take responsibilities very seriously or at least much more seriously than before. And I, I really started to look for those those kind of information that I mentioned to you. The uh, really the uh, whether it had uh, whether the uh, the glacier. I mean, the, 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 the for instance, the uh, the ice was hard or soft, or how 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 difficult it could be during the day. And I was not able to find any reliable uh, information online. And at the end, in the end, I was I was forced to actually pick up the phone and and you know call some friends and say, hey, by the way, did you by any chance? Um, you know, get the, get there, and 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 do you do you have any information in any way? I'll call the hut itself, which is always useful. But you know, it and and I I started thinking, you know, as knowing what we can do with two days technology, uh, surely there is something more that we that we can do. And the um, and the second defining moment was um, in July when we had we had a major heat wave in the in the Alps I mean in, in Europe in general in Central Europe but in the Alps and uh, we we went uh, at, at, at a two-week uh, difference we went back to the same spot on a glacier which is called the glacier of the giant between Chamonix and, and Courmayeur and uh, and the first time we went it was just a piece of cake I mean you just you were basically running on the glacier you could you couldn't even see the crevasses it was just easy two weeks later we went back, and it was just a different planet. Basically, crevices everywhere, rocks falling, uh, and and it was so striking to see the difference. That really, I was, I, I, yeah. I mean, it was like a shock, really. And and then, you know, the combination of the two made it that I thought, really, we we need to do something about this because otherwise, uh, mountaineering is going quickly to become a, a nightmare. So, so much for sharing personal feelings and, and experience. 
and and getting back quickly uh, to uh, to the presentation uh, itself. So now, what I'm going to show you is 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 really a, I'm going to give you a very quick overview of what Mountain Now uh, is about. So the idea is to uh, be able to uh, show you a map, uh, ideally of of the Alps or places in the Alps for which you can get a very quick overview of the conditions. So good, average, bad, very bad, possibly. And then you would, assuming that we, we focus on the Weissmiss uh, uh, region, and uh, then if, imagine that the, uh, the, the conditions would be labeled as bad, you would be able to understand why. So the color in itself is not, is not enough, obviously. You would be able to uh, understand why in the sense of which hazards uh, have been identified by people uh, walking around. So for instance, here, you would have, uh, over the last two days, you would have three people out of ten uh, who, would, who would have reported falling rocks. For instance, ten out of ten open crevasses and, and uh, fragile uh, snow bridges. And, and ten out of ten that will have reported that basically the, uh, the whole hike uh, outing was completely crowded. So here you get a feeling uh, through the number of people who basically agree on an observation, how reliable. Uh, that is. So one thing you would get are, are really the, those basic statistics that give you instantly an idea of, of which hazards uh, you may encounter, which in turn can help you uh, prepare and get the right equipment also for the uh, for the uh, the outing. Another thing that you would be able to find on the map would be photos that could be placed, by the way, in real time, uh, provided uh, the network is there. And uh, this could be actually very useful because uh, this is a photo um, that was taken by, uh, by a friend uh, who's a guide in Chamonix who did the device miss in early August uh, last year. And this is the, the normal, so the usual route that everybody typically takes uh, walking down. And, uh, and there you can see how uh, appalling, <laughs> really, the, uh, the, the, the conditions of the, uh, of the glacier, the snow, I mean, the snow bridges, how fragile really they are. And, uh, and uh, that maybe if you get the chance to see that uh, as you're planning your day, um, you may be able to actually pick uh, another, uh, another uh, destination outing itinerary uh, that give you uh, a better, uh, better conditions, but also much more fun as you, uh, as you uh, walk around. And in addition to this photo on the map, you would also be able to, to, uh, to put some comments, very short comments, like, like tweets, really just to emphasize uh, a danger, for instance, or very to make yourself, to make sure that you're, you're, you're understood. In addition to that, in, in the next phase, uh, probably, the idea would be to connect those condition uh, information with those factors that I mentioned at the beginning, for instance, the, uh, the weather forecast, the, the radar images in the summer, and possibly in the winter, obviously the, all the avalanche uh, uh, information would have to be uh, taken it into account uh, as well. And at this point, Bente, I think I, I will stop. And um, it, may, it may be a good time just to uh, take a look at the, at the very short video that introduces the project. What do you think? Bente? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you can hear me, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm fine, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. uh, terrific, Alexia. Absolutely, uh, we can show a video. And but before I do that, uh, we share a video with you guys. I thought I would uh, ask uh, the audience here if they could uh, write very shortly in the chat what motivates their interest in the mountains. I mean, you heard Alexia uh, talk about her motivation for, for being in the mountains, for initiating this project. Uh, what about you guys? What is uh, motivating you? What is it about the mountains that you find interesting? That, uh, write that in the chat and I will upload or uh, get ready the video uh, while you are writing. The video is uh, 1 minute and 35 uh, seconds and uh, uh, you will see it now.
Yes, and we are uh, back. So uh, that was an introduction to this exciting project, and uh, I, I, you know, I just have to say that one of the reasons why I'm uh, uh, engaged in this project, just to say that before we go on, uh, Alexia, uh, is that. Um, it's it's a combination of the love of mountains and the combination of and and you will learn more about that in a minute now uh, uh you know authoritative data and crowdsource data or citizen science if you like it's uh, and and it's a new way of of uh experiencing the mountains it's a new way of uh, using a new technology and it's just very inspiring uh for me so i i you know i just love the project for for many many reasons so i think that you can go on uh alexia with uh, your uh, presentation now um are you uh you are ready to unmute yourself again I can happily continue. Are, are we showing the video? Or? The video has been shown to the audience and uh, so they now have uh, gotten um, a short introduction to Mountain Now and okay. I think you were about to talk about uh, maps uh, or yes. where were you in your presentation? Yes, indeed. Um, so now we're reaching the next the next um, we're touching on on really a crucial aspect of uh, of um, of mountain now and and uh, and uh, geolocalization itself and so I'll let uh, Ezio our, um, our experts in in the matter uh, take the floor well essentially the reason why I'm very happy to collaborate with Alexia is uh, starting is starting from what you said at the beginning, Bente. Yeah, uh, um, Alexia, Alexia, and Ezio. Uh, can you, yes. uh, when Ezio is uh, starting his um, introduction, could you um, go back to your video presentation rather than the uh, the slides? We you would love to see Ezio when he talks. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> With pleasure. Okay, I'm. I'm uh, I understand. No, no, no. I meant to you. That, that's. That's. I'm very touched for that. <laughs> uh, what, what I'm saying. We love to see you, Ezio. That's uh, how it is. What I'm saying is essentially why I'm here, for several reasons. When Alexia has proposed to me as presented his, her idea, I find it absolutely very fascinating for several reasons citizen science in the sense of support of people so we are starting to commit people second point is the change of paradigm and we are now going to crowdsourcing which is another important pasanavan jump respect to the normal way to work as Alexia mentioned before the fact that uh, this app present recent conditions other thing very important and finally geolocalization which really allows to know the right information at the right time in the right place not just a general idea of what is happening on the mountains the other big advantage of this uh, app is the fact that it's very easy to be used everybody uh, can use without without any problem it has been thought in this uh, in this way so I think that is uh, the best, the best approach we can have for this kind of uh, activity, and I'm really very happy for that. Maps are important. The best maps can be reached and obtained. Unfortunately, I should say, and paying because we have to pay a fee to the producers of the map. So I take the occasion of this meeting among us to. Uh, push everyone who is uh, watching at us, hearing what we are doing, to continue to support economically Mountain Now, because the more and more money we can arrive to have, the best maps we can use in the interest of the users. Thank you. 
Yes, thank you, Ezio. Um, is this when I think we can show uh, the video now, Alexia, right? Um, mm -hmm. So that you can see, um, learn more about the maps? Yeah, the maps and the technology that's behind Mountain Now. Um, yes. we, we really used an, uh, a forefront technology which is called GeoSDI. Right. And, uh, and uh, yeah, which is a great combination of really linking maps in, in, a, in a dynamic way, in, in, in a way that has not been done uh, uh, before. So yeah, the, the short video should introduce that if, if that works. Yes. So just to, to pick up, before I show you the vision, um, uh, a few words about um, the additional support. So this is a crowdsourcing project, as Alexia also said, and it's already a success. So congratulations so much, Alexia. Uh, I haven't said that. That's you know a real uh, achievement there already, and shows that this concept is actually uh, right on. Uh, and uh, what the next goal then is that you are all invited to participate in, if you want to, and that's what Ezio mentioned, is that we can uh, make the the tool even better and. The improvement of the quality is then lies within um, the, the the maps. And now you will see that the technology that this thing is built on is also a state of the art. It's top notch, so makes it more fun to be a part of. I think. So I will show I will show you the video now. And we are back. Um, okay. Excuse so me. Just, yes, just you have a question, Ezio? Uh, rather than a question, I would like just to integrate uh, what the people have seen on uh, GeoSDI, saying that they are Italian researchers, they work in the south of Italy, and we are very proud of that. And they are so well qualified that they essentially work for three different important institutions. The Italian National Civil Protection, the Italian Defense, and the UN World Food Program. This is in order really to qualify furtherly the quality of the group which is producing the app that will be operating for Mountain Now. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's great. So we know the, uh, the quality is is good for sure, and um, and before we go on, I just you remember I asked the audience about their motivations, and before we uh, we will uh, hear uh, Tour Mood's experience from uh, life in in the mountains, uh, and we will also learn what motivates Tour Mood. But uh, we will I will share some of the comments from the audience here, and. Um, one of them says, Nabil says, I love nature and I like to stay away from the noise of the city. Uh, Patrick says, I can completely switch and forget uh, my daily problems when I'm hiking in the mountains. Uh, Brit says, freedom, adventure and wildlife. And 
so and Fabricio says passion and is my job too so and I suppose that's a nice uh, transfer then to you uh, Turmud uh, you actually work in the mountains um, and uh, can you tell us first of all then what is your motivation for what you're doing and uh, why you uh, are here right now Yeah, um, I uh, I'm kind of in love with the mountains. Uh, I think they are beautiful and uh, challenging, and um, and it's I love it even better if I can bring my friends there and share that uh, experience of being um, immersed in beauty and solve challenges together, and basically have a good time. Okay, um, so uh, Alexia, just before we uh, we let Tormod speak more about uh, his adventures, did you uh, have more to add on the uh, mountain now? Just just to say that uh, the you know the whole experience has been uh, has been unbelievable, and that the community is growing every day, and um, so really tonight uh, is is a great opportunity for us to. To um, to make this community even bigger, um, and we welcome your your feedback, your comments, and we're really trying to improve uh, always. And, um, the application should uh, should be available in in August publicly, uh, following uh, a very intense and intensive uh, test phase involving uh, professionals, mountain guides, and uh, etc. In 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 July, and uh, that yeah, I mean it would be great to uh, to welcome you on board. Absolutely, and uh, so so this is a crowdsourcing uh, project. Crowd crowdfunding, you mean? Oh. Crowdfunding, yes, <laughs> but it's a crowdfunding of a crowdsourcing actually. Absolutely. And, I, <laughs> and, and what I like about it, just to say that, what I like about it is the safer together. You know, uh, yeah. it's it's really. I mean, citizen science and crowdsourcing is not something new, really, but it's the combination, the concept is not new, but it's the combination with the new powerful te technological tools that we have that makes this uh, new, in a sense. And, uh, and I really like this safer together. It's sort of a modernization of how we, you know, as a, as a mountain lover myself I grew up I'm Norwegian and we are trained you know even bef even before we're born <laughs> to go in the mountains <laughs> and so we are we are really uh, I mean in my generations anyway I think Tvudmud might uh, add some uh, some nuances to this but I'm gr I grew up by being trained on how to prepare for the mountains how to love the mountains uh, and one of the things that we did when we went you know going uh, on large distances, we asked the people who had been going the same route as us for, ex you know, collecting the information that you describe that we should actually collect and take care of, you know, an, an archive and make it accessible via your mobile app. Uh, so that's the te technology makes us able to collect all this, more of this information, have it archived and you know, we don't have to be uh, wonder. Do I remember correctly what that uh, person said about the conditions? Uh, was it or was it here or was it there? You know, on on, on the trail. So I think this this is the model. This is the innovation here that you actually bring the same uh, the ideas from old times. <laughs> I'm not really that old, but old enough. No, no later. <laughs> Anyways, it's it's a it's really a very nice innovation that we are being invited to be a part of. And um, Turmud, uh, can you now uh, tell us a little bit a little bit? seen from your perspective how can this tool be useful and what kind of situations are you exposed to as an extreme you know adventurer uh, can you share some of your experiences with us we are really eager to hear yeah um, 
so um, when I'm uh, planning my uh, trips, I, um, I used to be dependent on uh, a stack of books. And actually, uh, some of these books are the same. Uh, it's the same thing with uh, the map. Uh, I used to uh, have this one, and then uh, I had to update it to this one to have fresh information. Uh, I bought this map for a particular trip. Uh, it was only two years old when I uh, got it. And then when I got to the climbing, I have a picture that I can show you of the conditions. Uh, just let me see how I do this. So um, we expected this uh, glacier to be about three to four times uh, bigger than it w actually was. And um, climbing on it was uh, kind of exciting. Um, I also have a photo of... Uh, of the climb. So um, <clears throat> I think uh, climate change and the warm summer that we had uh, last year was uh, part of the problem. And uh, the day got so warm that we didn't really dare to take the same route uh, back down for fear of uh, more ice uh, falling off of uh, this particular place. And um, <clears throat> it's really hard to find uh, good and um, up-to-date information about problems like this. For the most uh, populated routes in the mountain, it's not so tricky. But for a slightly more remote project, it's, it can be really hard. And so um, uh, I think uh, uh, this project can, uh, re can really be helpful, uh, not only to me, but also um, people in, uh, in general. So, um, let's but, say, so... Yeah? Bente, sorry, can I ask a quick question? On, on, on the picture, we couldn't see any rope uh, beneath you, uh, Tormod. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. We, we, can't see on the, we can't see it on the picture, or it, it's not there? Uh, we brought the rope in the backpack in case it got steeper. Okay. Good. <laughs> Thank you, sorry, sorry about the diversion. That's fine. Uh, I was going to ask, uh, you know, Turmud, uh, you showed us uh, some maps, um, and you heard uh, Alexia, you know, give a, uh, you know, introduction to how to prepare for go hiking in the mountains. Is there anything else that you are when you prepare for your, well, your 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 quest on 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 the uh, summits in the Alps now. Is there anything else that you prepare for? Can you tell us a little bit about you know the daily life or uh, of a mountaineer like yourself? Uh, it's almost getting uh, late uh, for me uh, to stay up this late uh, because I have to go early to bed uh, to rise early and to try to follow the um, uh, the rhythm of the day. Oh. Uh, of course, I prepare my gear. Uh, I have to uh, to trust my gear 100%. Uh, clothes and climbing gear and so on. Um, I study the routes quite carefully uh, by reading books and searching online and, and it's it's a little bit like trying to find your way through a labyrinth um, because there's lots of information and sometimes it can be uh, uh, hard to judge uh, what is the better information um, and then well then you go and, and uh, try your best. Right. So, exactly, you, that was a cue for my next question, actually, because uh, no matter how well prepared you are, there will be surprises. And um, uh, there will be uh, some of the surprises will be not so pleasant. Um, is there anything in particular that you... Uh, you know, do you plan do your train for preparing for the unknown? <laughs> Uh, that's a tricky question. Um, I guess there can be known unknowns and unknown unknowns. Um, the first one, like falling through a um, snow bridge into a glacier, uh, a crevasse. Um, if you are roped up, then you should know how to get out of that situation. Although you don't really want it to happen because you waste a lot of time and it can also be scary and, and even dangerous. 
Uh, but then there is the unknown, unknown things that are really hard to predict. And uh, this one time there was a big uh, rockfall coming towards us, uh, which was maybe more in that category. Um, having uh, maybe having had this app, uh, we would have had better information about the conditions and. Um, how warm the mountain actually was, because I think uh, heat was uh, a major trigger in this uh, case. Uh, this fell from uh, an area near to the Dantes in uh, Chamonix, uh, Italy area, uh, close to the Hellbrunner uh, lift. And um, it was the biggest rockfall during that whole season, so I'm not sure if it, it was possible to predict it or not. To me, it was a big surprise. <laughs> so, um, uh, Tudmund, you have you, uh, right now, like I said, you are uh, sort of collecting uh, summits in the European Alps. And I mentioned briefly that you had been to Mount Everest as well. Um, can you say that there are, are there anything particular? Uh, to notice between, you know, are there any differences between the different mountain ranges? You also told me uh, when we spoke, prepared for this, that you had been to the Andes. Are there any uh, peculiar things with each of the uh, the mountain ranges that needs to be taken into account? Um, I think uh, that's a tricky question, um, and maybe. Uh, Maybe somebody else is, can answer it better. Uh, but I have, uh, obviously I've been much more in the Alps than I've been elsewhere. Uh, I've been based in uh, Chamonix for many years. Uh, and I think what is special here, is at least compared to uh, the northern regions like Norway, is um, um, temperature uh, and so the weather changes uh, to a bigger degree usually. Uh, here than uh, compared to Norway, and that affects the mountain uh, harder, so to say. Right. Yes. So um, I think uh, I have some more questions, but I also got a question from from the audience here. Uh, audience here, uh, Nabil Asal. He is asking you: Do you believe that there is nothing as bad weather but uh, bad gear? Uh, in Norway, we have this saying that uh, no weather is bad weather as long as you have uh, good clothes. Uh, and that might be correct if you're on a big flat surface like uh, a lot of the Norwegian mountain plateaus might be. Uh, it should be said that uh, you, you would also be dependent on a good training and uh, you should exercise the correct uh, um, choices. But, uh, but in the Alps, uh, and probably also Himalayas and uh, Andes and, and many other places, uh, the best gear in the world can't protect you. Uh, the weather will definitely um, uh, have to be taken into account, and, and bad weather uh, is a potential killer. Exactly. So I think uh, if you compare, uh, you know, go hiking in the forest uh, and go hiking in the mountains, uh, my personal impression is that you know when you, you we have more respect for the mountains because the consequences of weather, for instance, are more severe. Uh, of course, you can have be out of luck in the forest as well, but it, it's uh, a little bit safer. Um, that's my my uh, anyway my understanding of things. I don't know, uh, Alexia, how how do you see that uh, coming from the Alps? Unmute. <laughs> <laughs> Getting there. Yes, I mean you. I mean you. You mentioned the weather, but I, I guess it's really. Um, I guess you can't really distinguish between the weather and 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 the conditions that you actually face in the end. I mean they're so they're so uh, intimately um, uh, connected. But uh, yeah, I think the, it's it's this uncertainty that we were. That we were talking about before. I mean, you can probably feel it. I mean, as Tormod was hinting, the higher you are, I mean, if if you're really in haute montagne, as 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 they call it, the you can you can really feel the the impact of of the um, 
of the weather change in terms of temperature and, and it can be extreme. I mean, you can be out in, in, in the mountains early in the morning and it's, it's, it's around zero degrees and, and, and uh, you know, a few hours later, it's 30 degrees. Uh, so you really have to be able to, uh, to juggle and, and, and play with those kind of, of, um, of changes. Yeah, it's part of the experience. Exactly. So uh, I have one more question for you here now. Um, I think it's for you, Turmud. Were there moments when you got scared while hiking? Well, uh, obviously, uh, sometimes I've gotten scared, uh, yeah. Like uh, the rockfall I told about, that was uh, not a nice moment. But you do it anyway, right? Yeah, but I try to protect myself from instances like that by uh, taking uh, weather and conditions into account. Exactly. So it's all about preparing. And uh, let me see if I have more questions. Um, I, I just encourage you, uh, feel free to, to ask questions to, uh, to Turmud, to Ezio, to Alexia. Uh, okay. We are in the Q&A. Yeah. Yeah, I, think, I think there's one from from Vincent, uh, which ah. is, which is connected to the uh, the actual accuracy and the, the overall quality control of the, oh, of, yeah. the of the data that will be um, that will be uploaded into Mountain now, and and I think it's a it's a it's a key and a crucial question. The uh, so the way we we we're hoping to 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 optimize the the quality control is uh, first we're asking as people register through a very simple process. I mean, one thing we didn't really mention is that the interface of the app is super easy. So in a few seconds, you can really uh, send an, uh, an observation uh, and in real time and boom, it, it, it's done. But as you register, um, you are asked whether you're, you're a professional, you're um, highly experienced, or you're uh, an enthusiast or, or an amateur. And uh, every time you look at, a, at an observation in the system, you can actually see what level of experience was associated with uh, with that observation? Also, through the the statistics that I mentioned, the idea is to really reach a critical mass, and that's why I mean you, you beautifully mentioned the the role of the community of the crowdsourcing. It's really we really need to get this critical mass of people contributing so that we get an idea whether it's one people out of ten out of hundred uh, that really observed something, or whether it's it's hundred out of hundred. And, and for us, it's really uh, it's a great way of excluding any uh, any observation that would just be uh, irrelevant, if you like. Um, another another uh, complementary uh, uh, approach, if you like, will be to to enable to encourage and enable people to uh, to report very also very easily through the system any uh, inappropriate content, basically. And as we know. If you want to up, you can. If you want to consult information, it's completely open. You don't need to do anything. But if you want to upload information, you have to identify yourself. And obviously, if someone is is, is spotted or identified as as someone having given uh, inappropriate information, obviously, if it happens once, twice, then that person would be excluded from the from the system. Exactly. Yeah. So this is one of the challenges with with uh, crowdsourcing, is that you. Uh, the, the, the question of quality of data, and it sounds to me that you have created a, a system to handle that. Um. At least, yeah. I mean, we we have a combination. You know, we're trying to to approach it from different ways. That that we're hoping will 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 help will help filter really the uh, the information. Yes. So uh, again, uh, no. What I know from from other crowdsourcing. Um, uh, projects like you, you have very often when you have uh, you have like a natural disaster of some sort happening uh, it could be a flooding it could be an earthquake and you see in modern times now when we have Twitter and Facebook and you know all this social media which is uh, another type of uh, crowdsourcing is like involuntary crowdsourcing but the information that you can collect is very useful uh, the only thing that you need to take care of is um, 
again, that some, some people are inaccurate because they don't know better, and some people are actually, it turns out, uh, deliberately inaccurate. <laughs> uh, and, but we have logarithms, so the technology itself is able to sort of filter uh, exactly. these outliers uh, of information. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's also a part of it, and, and which enables us to, uh, to make use of this new technology, actually. Geolocalization is a strong tool in this direction, definitely. Yes, and the geolocation is, is uh, definitely very important and it's getting better um, every year, every month almost, and, you know, the technological development is ha happening very fast. Um, I think, uh, Alexia, you haven't really told people where they can uh, be a part of it if they want to. That's uh, that's correct. Uh, well, there's a very simple web address. I don't know, Bente, if you want to type it into the... I mean, I can also um, briefly uh, share my screen again, if that, if that helps. Yep. But the idea, yeah, as, as, as we were saying, it, it's really this, uh, the concept is really about the, uh, the community itself and really making this happening together. I mean, let, let's be honest, I mean, either we do it together or, or we don't. Uh, if, if, if this is not a community thing, it, it will not work. So uh, I guess we have, a, we have a decision to make there. And, uh, and I, I believe we can make a huge difference in terms of safety for everyone in the mountains uh, uh, using um, and, and developing this tool. Um, and and uh, yeah, I guess this is our chance. So my, my very warm invitation to, to everyone to, uh, to be part of it and, and, and join us. We're, um, yeah, we're a great community and, and uh, yeah, the, the whole thing will be fun. Yes. So um, I don't think, well, uh, I just posted what I call an offer and the offer is for you guys to be a part of it so you get information, detailed information on where to go, where you can uh, take a closer look at the project itself and um, evaluate if you want to be a part of it right now or at least you will be informed of where you can find more information about this tool. The tool will be developed. But what we are aiming for right now, Alexia, as I understand, and Ezio, is to get a better uh, quality of uh, the maps and the geolocation. Or? The yes, geolocation uh, is yes, absolutely, Bente, you, you're, you're spot on. Um, as you mentioned, now we have, we have the, uh, the basic funds to develop the first version of the app. But in order to really to, to unleash the full potential of the app, we, we need excellent base maps. And, and, and those base maps are national maps, typically like the Swiss topo map. And, uh, and, the, and, and this comes at a significant um, uh, cost. So, yeah. So any, any kind of info observation you can think of, also for rock climbing. I mean, we didn't talk about rock climbing much. But if you want to, um, you know, you, crawl, you come across a spit or something that's falling apart, uh, uh, and you really, you just take a picture, you geolocalize it, but it has to be precise to be as useful as, as it should be. Okay, so yeah, so I, I, am, I got a little bit distracted because we have an active audience, that's great. Thank you everybody for, uh, uh, for participating, that's really uh, highly appreciated. Um, I can, um, I think we have a question for concerning the app itself. Uh, I will come back to you, Nabil, uh, but Patrick is asking, do you have a roadmap for the application development and evolution? Uh, maybe an idea for a first delivery, uh, probably beta version. I think you mentioned something about it, but you can repeat and uh, sure. expand. Sure. Well, the plan, the plan is to release the app uh, publicly uh, in, at the beginning, let, let's say the 15th of August to be... Uh, to be uh, to be safe, as mentioned, it will be completely free. Um, and uh, in the meantime, we'll have a uh, an intensive test phase involving uh, uh, mountain experts to really 
to to uh, really uh, evaluate the uh, the reliability to Im to improve the uh, to further improve the uh, the interface uh, as much uh, as possible so that when we deliver the best app possible uh, in August so that's really the plan right and then um, uh, let's see will the app work just online Fabrizio ask sorry will it work only online yeah no uh, the um, so the interface if you want to consult information so the about the conditions yes you will have to be uh, online but to use the uh, to uh, to collect observation in the field uh, you will be fully free to use it offline so the interface is is actually uh, fully available offline to to uh, take pictures uh, make a short comment do your all your whole uh, evaluation you can do it all offline eventually to up to upload this data onto the system you will have to get back onto the network at at some point exactly because that's <laughs> uh you know here in norway we are quite um lucky often because the the network is covering a large part of uh, of the country even in the forest uh i get comments on that that you know do you have a covers there you know they are surprised but of course there are areas where there are no coverage so the a tool that rely on uh, uh on internet uh, connection would not be so useful in the alps uh, let me see uh, different languages, uh, Alexia. Can you talk about the language? Yes, yes. Uh, very good point. Uh, the, the 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 app will be will, will be available in four in four languages: so uh, English, French, German, and Italian. That's great. So, yeah, yeah. No, the idea is to be really the idea is to make it a, a completely international uh, tool and an app. Mm -hmm. Uh, covering the whole. Uh, yes, absolutely, um, um, and, uh, and 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 also to build, you know, so that we we can all benefit from one another, from from each other's countries as well. So it's not, you know, the French on the one hand, the Swiss, the Germans, the Italians. It's really whoever contributes in Italy will be visible. And useful to uh, to anyone in France and the other way around. I mean, everybody visiting each other's countries as well will contribute, uh, etc. Yes, uh, I, I have some more questions, but I, I promised Nabil that I will uh, ask a question for for him, and I think that is for you, um, uh, probably Twirmud. <coughs> Sorry, is it a bad idea to hike alone? I think you. Are you alone all the time, or do you have always a companion, or what's your advice? Uh, well, my advice is it doesn't have to be either this or that. Um, sometimes it's a good idea to hike alone, and uh, other times it's uh, better to be part of a small or large group, so you really have to evaluate for yourself uh, what is your skill level, how um, uh, complex is uh, what you uh, uh, are trying to achieve. And will it be more beneficial to do it alone or to uh, go with a friend? Or even maybe um, hire a guide to take care of uh, your group. So there you go, <coughs> Nabil. <laughs> you can pick and choose. <laughs> uh, let me see. Um, uh, there were, I'm just looking for more questions. No. And I forgot my own question. <laughs> uh, I think you would uh, be able to uh, to see. Can can you uh, tell me? Uh, give me a thumbs thumbs up or um, you know uh, a hint in, in the uh, the comments in the chat room if you are able to uh, to read the information about the mountain now and how to uh, be a part of it it if you wish to uh, let me know uh, I think I, I posted the, the the information that will enable you to be a part of it and we already and we have somebody in the room uh, Vincent who is uh, already a part of it <laughs> um, and uh, I am definitely looking forward to play with this tool. So, uh, so what you say, going back to um, 
to together we are safer. And you mentioned uh, uh, Alexia that you uh, it, it relies on a certain uh, size on the crowd. Have you have you calculated you know with uh, how many uh, is necessary in order for for this to the system to work? No, I think I think it, this is something that really uh, has to come out from the uh, you know testing the app in the field. Uh, really, that, that, that's that's why we have the test phase, and and really, the, I think the whole summer, the more we use it, uh, the, the the more we'll understand. And and uh, in a way, I think you know, if, even if you have a couple of inputs that come from ex from highly experienced or professional people, I, to me, it's already useful. And and honestly, compare with what is available right now on the net. It's major added value already, at least in my, my personal view. Um, so I guess, the, yeah, this is really something that will come out of the of the test phase and the first summer of, of using it. Yes, because I think uh, based on the experience from uh, crisis management, it turns out that when it comes, so this is based on modern technology. Um, it is also contributions from people. But when it comes down to it, it it turns out by the professional, you know, experts in crisis management, that um, uh, people are reluctant to trust uh, new technology. I don't know. Have you made some reflections on that, uh, Twin Mode? Would you trust this? Uh, will it be an important part of your, um, say, your preparation? You said that you are, uh, you know, you are seeking information from many different sides. Uh, places, uh, would this, uh, how much emphasis would you uh, put on this? How much would you trust such a tool like this? Have you thought about that? Uh, yeah, obviously I've uh, thought about it and uh, I think it's uh, totally up to uh, Alexia and her team to uh, moderate and, uh, and work as editors for the information, mm -hmm. uh, but also for the users to uh, contribute valuable uh, information. And if um, if the editors and the, the users can pull together, uh, I think this can be a very, very uh, valuable tool. So that's my uh, hope. <laughs> yeah. In either case, it's uh, it's an interesting experiment, and um, to see how you can exploit it. I mean, and and you you won't know until you try it. In this case. And uh, I just want to to share with you that you have an offer here of a new. Uh, uh, at least he's at Fabrizio is asking if you need a new beta tester. So okay, it's excellent. Very <laughs> it's a good sign. <laughs> no, no, absolutely welcome. So there you go, Fabrizio. Go ahead, and you can contact. I suppose wh where does he? Who do we contact, and and how? Uh, actually, through the Ulule side, I, if you send a message, I'm the one. I'm the one receiving it, so it's very easy. Actually, it's probably the easiest. Absolutely, terrific, terrific. So um, using, Bente, I, I personally, I can't see the uh, the Ulule link, but you, I mean, I, I'm, maybe there are things I can't see. I'm sure. <laughs> so it's 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 it maybe just me. Um, it's um, part if you scroll down on your other window. <laughs> okay, no, no. If you, if you, yeah. It, so, it probably so I will. Uh, so what I do now is uh, just so uh, to make sure that you all see it. Uh, I will post it in the chat as well. I post a link to the Ululi site where you will get more information about. Uh, this um, Mountain Now tool, where you are invited to be a part of it, uh, and we are safer together. I really, I have to say, I really like that, and I like that it's it's this combination of a new technology and uh, and I, I unfortunately I would I didn't have time to upload a picture of my son when he was around ten years old, I think, and we were hiking in the Norwegian mountains. And we had this huge, you know, the the first GPS. Uh, they were really, really big, you know, 
these are very small <laughs> the the GPS we, we were so we were carrying along the GPS just for fun you know we had the maps and we you know it was easy hiking but you know it, he he had he took such a pleasure in following um, you know the digital display of the GPS where are we what's the uh, uh, what's the speed with what speed do, are we moving in the terrain and so on so there's a lot of fun in in this useful tools as well is this something uh, uh, so can you afford to be playful like this when you do your serious hiking um. Uh, that's a tricky question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking you all tricky questions today, aren't I? <laughs> I see the GPS more as a tool than a toy, <laughs> really. <laughs> but um, uh, I guess uh, some other things that are seen as tools can also work as toys. So, yeah. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, at the time, uh, the GPS, you know, the the, ha the hands free, or the, you know, this this uh, personal GPS was quite new at the time. Uh, now we have GPS on our mobile phones. This, you know, is nothing. But when you have something new, it's like we are the, the gadgets. I'm speaking to you, gadgets geeks out there. <laughs> you know, it's it's pure fun just to play with with these tools uh, as well. And um, in addition, you have this human factor uh, of uh, being a social, you know, the crowd sourcing of the information is also, a, you know, a human factor that we mix with the technology here. So, uh, but back to what you need and what is exactly is going to happen now, Alexia. Uh, we know this is a cool project. We have uh, the, uh, the tool will be useful. It would add something to is already there. Um, what exactly will happen now? You said uh, you will have a beta ready by mid-August, but you already have the resources necessary to develop a first simple version, but what you are aiming for now is a better version, right? Yes, absolutely. As, as mentioned, uh, we, we Again, the, the, the question mark we have at the moment is really about the, the, which kind of base maps we'll be able to use. Obviously, as a default, we'll have the free uh, open topo map. But again, if you, if you, as mentioned, if we want to realize the full potential of the app, we really need you know, very high quality uh, maps, such as, again, as the, the Swiss topo map. I was talking to Swiss topo people recently, and they were telling me that the uh, the new version is actually going down to one ten thousand oh. in terms of precision oh. in, in 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 many places. Um, so that yeah, we're getting serious uh, there, and and that really makes a difference. So that would really be the the next milestone, if you like, for for what we're trying to uh, to to achieve, and we'll do whatever we can to 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 uh, ensure. That uh, mountain now can be based on 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 the base the best map the base maps possible. I see. So uh, I got another question again. Uh, Twinmudo, I think. Uh, well, of course, you also, Alexia. Um, and it might be linked to this new tool. Uh, so Nabil is asking, how do you know when to turn around and go back? And we we Norwegians we 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 are. We know exactly what this is. There is no shaming turning. Uh, it's something we learn when go hike, well, go skiing in the mountains in the winter time. There is no shame in that. But when do you decide? How do you know when to do that? Would uh, would you use a tool, for instance, in this case, uh, the the app that Alexia is uh, is uh, initiating here, or what kind of decision tools are you using when you Decide. I will turn. Well, I think that the, the brilliant thing about um, this app is um, to try to push that um, decision to another point on the um, um, timeline. Because uh, given the question, um, I think you get to a certain situation, uh, conditions has changed, or something unforeseen has uh, happened, and that's um, that's usually the time. Uh, when you abort uh, your plan, otherwise you go to your destination and you go back, and, and it's easy. But um, with this kind of information, maybe you can take um, 
very good decisions uh, much earlier. So you could uh, monitor the conditions on the route you are on and know things that are uh, further on the route, or perhaps even know it in the planning phase and, and choose something else. Excellent. And I, I think uh, that in, uh, in a very good way um, uh, sums up what this is uh, all about. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that was a great uh, note um, for to, to end uh, on as well. Um, we are actually over the hour. Um, we got many interesting questions from the audience, and I thank you so much for staying with us. I thank uh, the presenters and initiators and uh, adventurers. Thanks a lot. Uh, and uh, you have, uh, there's a time limit here. You can actually uh, make the uh, expensive maps a reality for this app uh, if you uh, either contribute yourself by which is the deadline, uh, Alexia, for, for this? Yeah, it's a very good point, actually. Uh, it, well, we basically re it, we are basically into the last 24 hours of the campaign, so the very last day, uh, yeah, tonight is is yeah, and, and tomorrow tomorrow is really the very last chance to um, to contribute. Exactly. So you have a little bit more than 24 hours, and uh, so if you uh, think this is a good uh, project uh, for some of your friends and your connections, please feel free to share this um, online training with your uh, in your network. It's not too late. Uh, they will not, of course, be in the unique situation uh, as to ask questions directly to us but they will definitely learn a whole lot from watching this um, recording afterwards, which will be made available. So again, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, audience. Thank you, Ezio. Thank you, Turmud. And thank you, Alexia. It's been a pleasure. It's been absolutely. Same for us. The pleasure was ours.